Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> um, it makes sense we said at the same time because we're mashing day on accident. Um, twins. Twins. But, yeah. Good morning. Good um, morning. Welcome, everyone. We yeah. have Creatively Candace here, yeah. as always. Grateful girl thinking Mother Nature is teasing us because she probably is. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think it's spring. But you think so? Yes. Uh, we'll, see. we'll see. Well, welcome everyone. This is Root Shoots and Coffee, where we talk about indoor house plants, outdoor gardening, and mm-hmm. drink a nice warm beverage. So yeah, today it's actually not coffee; it's tea. Yeah. <laughs> so so um, grab yours and join us for a little while. And we're just gonna kind of talk spring. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm Kirsten, and oh, this is Haley, by the way, yeah. too. So Haley, um, if you have questions for us yeah. put it in the comment section put it in all caps so it's easier to find um and yeah i'll try to answer your housework questions hey will answer your gardening questions but yeah yeah are you guys so excited for fake spring i'm i'm not convinced it's a real thing because i'll just get my hopes up and then one day i'd come back real sad because <laughs> i know michigan's gonna snow on us a no. lot more still I'm gonna say I don't think there's more snow but i'm just gonna be optimistic because i'm gonna be placing bets yeah. No, (laughs) no, but yeah, I see, um, someone says it's 60 in Connecticut this week. It's also supposed to be 60 here in Michigan too. It was 65 yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah, so nice. I was inside the majority of the day, sadly, but had to get things done. Mm -hmm. And, um, I got out in the evening and, uh, went and checked on my maple taps. Do you guys have any maple taps out? So this is my first year doing maple. So I've oh, never yeah. never done it before, and we're doing it over at the farm at my grandparents. And um, my idea was I had my two five-gallon buckets, and I just wanted to do a couple of my taps. My family doesn't do a couple things. We uh. do it all. <laughs> if I had ten taps, ten taps are going in the trees. And I'm, like, running around like a lady with my head cut off, I guess. I don't know. But um, I have probably collected in the last week, I think, I'm near 40 gallons. I meant like 35 gallons, which if you didn't know the ratio, do you know the ratio? I don't. Between sap to uh, to maple syrup. No. I like maple syrup, but I don't know these things. <laughs> okay, this will make you appreciate how expensive maple syrup is and like the real thing. It is 40 gallons of sap to one gallon oh, of maple syrup. That's so rough. <laughs> it's, so it makes sense why it's so expensive. They're so, ah, uh, yeah. I have so much sap coming in, slightly overwhelmed, but it's fine, it's fine. I live my life overwhelmed, it's fine. <laughs> I always have way too many things to do. I also think it's part of gardening. Like everything, like you have a lot going on at once. And- I have. That's the season. Yeah. We're, that is this. That's exactly it. It's the season. We're knocking all the rust off. I have all the maple sap coming in. I have over. I'm probably nearing two thousand seeds planted. Like, whoo! That's a lot of seedlings. Yeah, and we're only like a step in the door. So we got lots coming. Let's see, <laughs> Patrick, nailing it this morning. <laughs> Why are peppers the most obnoxious plant? They're jalapeno business. Help me. Is that supposed to be like they're all up in your business? Oh, they're jalapeno business. There it is. That's good. That's good. Let's see. Ah. We hardening off crops. I was just going to say that too. Beer takes too long. Mm -hmm. Um... I do want to know what crops you're harding off. It's just your cold hardy. Um, throw that down there. But Vicky asked how to get rid of slugs. Beer takes too long. Hmm. I don't have a slug problem. The only beer. thing that people ever tell me is the beer trick. So you guys flood the answers. Do you have other ways to get rid of slugs? What is the beer trick? I don't. I don't. <laughs> I need to learn. <laughs> slugs are elkies. They just you just put a bowl of beer out, and you'll come out in the morning, and all your slugs will be in the beer. Wow, slugs are algies. That's a new <laughs> hashtag. <I'm> just yeah. <laughs> no. Um, interesting. Um, <laughs> it's supposed to be 48 today with snow expected tonight. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Michigan. <laughs> that sounds not cute. Um, let's see. 
Uh, everyone just got warm weather, it looks like, which is very yeah, exciting. Yeah, Wisconsin is beautiful. I see, a lot of people are disagreeing with me about the no more snow, though. A lot of people are saying March is just a trickster, but it snows on my birthday sometimes. My birthday is May 14th. Uh, I better not. I'll be in Hawaii. That it frosted well. then. Last year, we had that. Uh, you know what? I think after last year's weather, we deserve a nice treat, and we should have early spring. We had a late frost, and then we had a massive drought all summer long. Like, it was terrible. Rough. It was yeah. so bad. Um, so bad. Luke and Sarah's off-grid life says, get ducks, and they'll eat your slugs. I'm all for and it. And I love that as the perfect excuse to buy ducks. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. So, what are you guys doing right now outside, getting ready for spring? Um uh, my brother and I, who run our farm together, spent a whole weekend over at our grandparents getting things ready. Hmm. Um, we cleaned out like our bramble patches, which if you didn't know, brambles are your raspberries, your blackberries, and your black raspberries. Oh. So mm-hmm. we got all the old canes pulled out. Um, I have cuts everywhere. <laughs> so uh, thorny. Yeah. But sure. um, yeah, that's The necessary good. evil of gardening thorns. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's fun. I mean, it's been a beautiful weekend. So gardening. nice. It's you guys, good. it was nice enough to do some propagation. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah? True, yeah. True. Um, I actually think, like, to me, I think I'm going to start repotting some plants, too. Like, you know, they say to wait till spring. Um, I feel like now is kind of a good time for my plants. Like, I'm noticing, like... Once they're really ready for it, and I think okay, it's... Okay, tell us those signs again, because I have some plants that I need to know if they, I can... If add. they need to be repotted? Okay, mm. so sometimes just looking at them, you can kind of tell, like, it, it looks overcrowded, and that's when you definitely know. Yeah. But beyond that, too, another thing to look for is, and don't be misled by, like, the air drying out your plants, like, their heat being on, drying out your plants yeah. more. Um, because if they're all drying out, then that's not a good telltale sign. But sometimes, like, if you have a plant that's drying up way faster than it normally has in the past and such, then you kind of know, like, it's absorbing the water too fast or yeah. it's running out too easily. Like, it's probably rebound. So there's a lot of good signs to look for like that. Or, obviously, if there's roots coming through the drainage hole in the bottom, uh, repot that now. <laughs> or sometimes I, I've had a root reach out of the top and I'm like, And you're no. like, hey, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you need to be repotted, don't you? So... Um, there's Your like a tell too. Yeah, so there's a lot of signs. But normally to me, I look for the overcrowdedness or the water issue. Or sometimes if your plant is just kind of starting to look a little sad and you can't find any other reason. Like you fertilize every once in a while, not in the winter, but you fertilize every once in a while if your plant's had dormancy and you're watering regularly, nothing's changed, lighting is good, then and humidity is good. That's something I would look at would be repotting. Is there any harm in up potting when it does, it's not like at that point like overcrowded? I have a few that I kind of just I feel like they're a little stunted, like they're not giving me a great deal of growth, but they're not overcrowded yet either. I think if I gave them a bigger pot, yeah, I think get big. I, well, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, unless they're overcrowded. Really, right. that could be a fertilizer issue too. I don't um, fertilize my plants. Yeah. Not that it won't. I literally just don't. Yeah. So I'm learning, guys. I'm learning. I would fertilize it um, and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Creatively mm-hmm. Candace, my son watered my orchid with Mountain Dew yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, boys. <laughs> yeah, no good. Oh, good. We got people cleaning out. So the downings have started tilling new ground and preparing for our bees yes guys Ah. bees are coming in my family is filling um five hives i think this year so lots of bees coming which is necessary we are growing (laughs) so much you just don't want to be my twin no it's fine we're fine it's good (laughs) um i definitely want to come see the bees does anyone else do beekeeping yeah like in the circle because i'm kind of finding a correlation like the more gardeners i meet the more people i realize keep bees but. honestly once you start keeping bees too it's fun to just drive around and you'll start noticing hives um out in people's fields or out by yeah. the trees and you never knew they were there you take this path all the time but not until i started keeping bees did i really start seeing the hives everywhere yeah i noticed that definitely want to go north more but um that's I, fair yeah 
I did want to add too. I see some more people saying like the why you wouldn't want to go to the bigger pot. And I did mean to bring this up too. If you put your plants in a bigger pot when they're not ready, you the problem is that the soil is going to hold the moisture more, and so you're going to cause root rot. That's kind of the reason why you don't want to oh like put in something that's way too big. If it's ready to go up, then that's different. But also, there's people make the mistake of like let's say like going from a pot this big to something like this big you know no. it just it just <laughs> it's so can't you just do have a a medium that would drain better well you should have good drainage anyways right but i mean but um uh, it just doesn't no no you just don't want to put a plant in the much. garden i mean a garden is not a contained space so why can i do it there and not with a house plant you could do it there house plants are picky have you seen the meme where it's like um, you know, a house plant out in nature, they can take anything, like, it's like storms, whatever, <laughs> house plant in my house, like, I forgot to water, like, noon, water at six, and it's like, I must die now. <laughs> it's just not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Cleaned out a small garden of my fall winter crop, crops, excuse me, and set up cold frames and some compost. Cleared the big garden. Uh, we're pruning, dad and brother, we're pruning the orchard. You guys seem like you were on fire this weekend. That is awesome. Very cool. Mm-hmm. That poor orchid. <laughs> that message uh, popped up again to me. <laughs> no. Starting seeds and harvesting vermicompost for my container garden. In your apartment building, what do you grow mm-hmm. in there? Uh, I like, do you, are you just in like singular pots? Have you built something? I'm just curious mm-hmm. kind of what you're working with. Maybe that's my issue. I've been putting my seedlings right into my five-gallon pots. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I see that too. Um, are they struggling, Virginia? Because five-gallon is a is a high asking for a seedling. Now, what I was talking about is putting out starts. Mm-hmm. So your your seedling isn't a start until it has. I think it's three or four sets of true leaves on it. Um, I could be wrong there, don't quote me. But, um, yeah, so I wouldn't necessarily put a seedling directly into that large of a space. It's still gotta build its root system. There's a lot of interest in bees. A lot of people are saying that they're trying to either get started this year, or I saw some people are saying, how do you attract bees? Like there's a lot more wild yeah, pollinators. You can, yeah, you, Oh, I mean, there's plants and whatnot that you can um, put out. Clover is a great one. Um, Red clover is a big one for bees. And um, you can do uh, like lavender and salvia. Oh. mm -hmm. And I mean, basically your whole herb garden. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. one. (laughs) Doesn't salvia attract hummingbirds too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, just so win win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, getting my beds built this weekend are bust. Wicked awesome gardening. Got to do it. You're gonna regret it if you wait until spring to do it. Now is the time to get all that done. Clean out your garden mm-hmm. sheds. Clean out your greenhouses if you're blessed to have one. Oh, yeah. Cause I'm Especially not. during this warm weather. Like, do it now and not, like, when it gets closer to and let's say we get a cold week and you're like, oh, I wait till the last minute, I have to do it now. Exactly. So. And then <laughs> if you wait until it's planting time, you're going to get, it's just, it becomes overwhelming because you can't find the tools you need. Not everything's in its place. And you have all these plants to get in the ground before they're overgrown out of their pots. Mm-hmm. So get it done. This is us encouraging you. Get out there. I want to hear all about it next week. Are you doing anything... Nothing in the ground yet, right? Just your seedlings and Nothing in the ground yet. Mm-hmm. But I am doing, I started a few things a little early for us. Um, and I'm going to play around with putting them out like a week or so before mm-hmm. our frost. I'm kind of yeah. just, I'm all about the experiments this year. Yeah, you are. I kind of noticed. I'm having fun go. though. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. I yeah. love that part of gardening or house plants and everything. It's like, what's going to work? And like even... Luke and I were talking about um, propagating and stuff and like trying different methods and so like I'm going to propagate a string of pearls and do like two different methods like the moss and like water and stuff and just see because everything's different. Do you have a garden journal? I do have a bunch of notebooks. But Perfect. Start yeah. one. Take all the notes. This is how we learn for the next time. 
after yeah. yeah when it starts how long it takes yeah i don't i actually haven't really kept track of that kind of stuff with my house plants um but i mean this, for this propagation yeah. experiment you're doing would be cool to see yeah mm-hmm. i feel like i I don't know. I feel like I just keep track. But I will say when you start house plants, it's like it is overwhelming. And then it's like you want to get plants that all need similar care so that's easy. I don't do that. I'm like, oh, I like that one. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, take that one. But just make it <laughs> easier. <laughs> but eventually, like, it, uh, you start to remember and it doesn't matter. But, but yeah, a journal is a good idea. Um, just like outdoor gardening journals. I have seen a rise in like house plants journals too like it's a newer thing but they sell well, really fast <clears throat> the journals themselves is kind of a newer thing like the marketing mm-hmm. on it is a newer thing but the idea of a garden journal okay no book yeah. i mean i have my grandparents garden journals um just what they wrote down each season when they started things how the weather was and honestly it's a huge tool one it's also really cool to look back at um uh, you know, my grandpa's, especially because he's not here anymore and he's the one who got me into gardening. So, like, mm. super sentimental to me. But it's also a huge tool for us to use each season because we learn as we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. Um, Ashley Spears is asking, how do you know which bramble canes to get out? I was oh, kind of wondering a, that earlier, too. Yeah, that's an awesome question. Um, maybe we need a visual. Yeah. I'm going to grab a sticky note here. Okay, so... For your brambles, you have two type, like your raspberries, you have two types of canes. You have your primocanes and you have your floricanes. So your primocanes typically have um, good color to them, like almost like mm. a, kind of like this marker. Uh, <laughs> that, like you a, can't see. <laughs> that you can't see, a burgundy color, typically burgundy-ish blue, and it's just a straight line, guys all it is it is okay to top your your primocanes uh we topped ours around four or five feet because some of them were pretty tall and at that point they're kind of out of control so we did top a couple of ours um to hopefully condense onto the stronger part of the primocane and then you have your floricanes which uh produced the year prior and what you'll see on these is lateral lateral fruiting stems uh so straight across and lateral meaning that they where am i there i am (laughs) on exactly on opposite sides of your Mm. cane in the middle these are what you are taking out all of this leave your prima canes and then i was uh doing some research on it they do suggest leaving only like four per foot uh square foot of your primocanes so if you have any really weak ones you can go ahead and take those out they're not going to do you much good anyways just stick with your nice strong strong ones wow that is actually interesting there was more to it than i expected (laughs) yeah 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 and i mean i kind of had a blast this my first time pruning them we harvested off them last year they were a bear to get to a bear to get to just Ah. it didn't work (laughs) patrick i'm not as good as you (laughs) <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was, no, last year was a bear to get to because we had these canes all over the place and all of them want to bite you. So we had like, full sleeves and all this heat. It was terrible. So our goal was to clear all that out. Not only does it help with harvesting, mm-hmm. it does also help with airflow. Yeah, I imagine which, more go ahead. growth too. Yep. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. because, because of the airflow, it's not... Um, it's not as a doesn't have as much potential <laughs> to get disease. That wasn't the way I wanted to word that, but that's how it happened. And then another positive, which would lead to more growth, is increased sunlight. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So yeah. Once you clean some of that out, you can your sunlight will come on in. That makes sense. Plus, I just think it would look cleaner too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks nicer. Yeah. Um, yes. Agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, Randy is asking, what is your preferred fertilizer for houseplants? And I'm actually kind of experimenting around with a few different ones. Um, I, like many others, when they first started, was using the the miracle Grow like liquid pump one, because it's just so easy. And I, you know, their soil is my favorite, but I haven't had a problem with the fertilizer. However, um, I've been seeing a lot of different things about um, 
like more natural ones you could do. So people like say banana peels and let, let them soak in water. And then after like, I think it's like a week or something, you pour that into your plants with their regular watering and that does a fertilize, it fertilizes it as well. So there's a lot of interesting natural ones and um, some more specific ones per different plants. But yeah, I'm kind of experimenting around. However, I have had luck with the Miracle one, Miracle Grow one, but I do want to try some of those methods. Um, if you or anyone else has tried the like banana peel one or anything different, uh, let us know. Mm -hmm. I have heard people doing the coffee grounds too, just like outside as well. But yeah. And that would smell good. I've seen some other ones that sound too gross. I wouldn't want to put it in my own <laughs> house lands. <laughs> but, oh, that's fair. Yeah, someone... Uh, no, I'm not going there. <laughs> no. Okay, someone real quick asked what a primocane is. So just super quick flash. Um, brambles are your raspberry blackberries and black raspberries. Mm -hmm. You have two sets of canes. You have your primocanes, which is your this year's fruiting cane. This mm. nice slender fella. And then you have your flora canes, which were last year's canes. Um, and you're looking for that lateral uh, fruiting growth. And that is um, what you're getting rid of, is all these lateral canes. So that was just a quick touch for Miss Deborah because she was a few minutes behind. Um, Crystal is talking about collecting all the things she needs. This one I have been harping on for weeks. <laughs> True. Space it out. You guys, gardening, it, it can be expensive. It doesn't have to be. Throw some seeds in the ground. It doesn't have to be expensive. But then you get all of us who are, you know, watching different families growing these beautiful aesthetic gardens mm -hmm. that just melt your heart and that's, it can be expensive. And it can be quite a burden if you're trying to do that all at once yeah. right before everything is going in the ground. Start now. Start collecting the things that you want and you need. And it also gives you the time to get creative. You know, you want the cattle panel arches. They're beautiful. I love them. They're one of my favorite things in my garden. Um, maybe a cattle panel is out of your question, out of your budget range. So mm -hmm. get creative. What else could you use? Could you do some sort of... PVC type opening, paint your PVC and put some sort of netting over it. You know, mm -hmm. get creative. There's yeah. a lot of options out there. Well, it's just like the greenhouse idea too. Like I know a lot of us want greenhouses and we can't afford them, but there are like little things that you can do if you have some that you just really need that humidity for. Yeah. Like we talked about the PC, PC, pipe before. <laughs> <laughs> um, and doing that and putting like a tarp over and stuff. Yeah. And like there are things you can do to like get through a season and like add on over the years. Heck, I've seen people use clear umbrellas from the dollar store and Actually, they just cut the handles off <laughs> at ground, like what that's would so be smart. ground, and then you just lay your umbrellas down. Genius, right? That is, and yeah, it's I, durable too. Right? Yeah. I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> so get creative. Um, just because someone else isn't using it doesn't mean it's not going to work. That's why I want you guys to start experimenting and try new things. Um, yeah, and tell us about them. So, mm -hmm. cut new trees they've been. Uh... Yeah, see, North Star. I gardened for 18 years in the ground before I was able to build my raised beds. Exactly. Not, mm -hmm. not everyone has the ability to put raised beds in, to put all the infrastructure in. But that doesn't mean you can't garden, you can't be a good right. gardener. Right, and there's so many different methods out there. And, I mean, when you think about it, like... I don't know. Like gar everyone's been gardening for so long, years, centuries of gardening, and we're over that crop. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we'll be fine <laughs> for life. People have been growing food, so yeah, great. Oh, back um, to the fertilizer thing. I see. Randy says that he had he ran out of indoor fertilizer and was using outdoor slow release fertilizer in one plant as an experiment. And we're going back to the experiment thing. We love doing plant experiments. Yeah. So that's how I feel right now, experimenting about the fertilizer. Someone else is something about kelp extract. And actually, I kind of forgot about that. I have done that before, too. And I think I kind of liked it. But I ran out, and then I just didn't get more. So I didn't really – I feel like give it the proper trial. But um, I have heard good things about that, too. And then just a quick science lesson. Oh, eggshells, too. That's oh, yeah. a good one, that's too. That's a good one, too. Mm -hmm. um, crush them, though. We'll yeah. <laughs> Anywho, uh, just a quick science lesson is that if you are trying to do these experiments, 
uh, narrow it down. Start one thing at a time mm -hmm. um, or have a few different plants that you're trying different things on each. If you try too many uh, variables, mm -hmm. you won't really know what worked uh, for that plant. You know, mm -hmm. if you try multiple different fertilizers on that plant or multiple different, yeah, anything. It won't work. You won't be able to narrow down exactly what helped you. True. And make sure they're getting similar watering and all that too. But yeah. Yeah. Try to keep it as um, consistent as possible across them. I didn't know this too. CC says um, kelp is great for root stimulating. Really? That is really interesting. Yeah. Did you know that willow branches can be used for root si simulation? No, I didn't. That's yeah. Really so like you could probably do it with your brambles and stuff. But if you have small trees that you're looking to, that maybe got docked or you're looking to just propagate them, willow branches in a five gallon bucket. And then you put your, what you're hoping to. It's it so interesting. Works. It works. It works. It's you so. Know what's in? Like a willow branch? It's different yeah, willow. than. I'm just kidding. I have no idea. I was like, what? no. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. But I think just so good. Yeah. Deborah, you're with me. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, use a coffee grinder mm -hmm. to grind up your eggshells, absolutely. That's smart, too. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys are getting things propagated for uh, a plant sale coming yeah, up. Yeah, so actually, um, if you're local or thinking about stopping by and visiting, too, we are doing a plant swap. I think it's going to be April 16th. I think it's the date. I think so. Um, We'll be hosting a plant swap, and so um, we've been working on propagating some of the plants that we keep here at my gardener, like upstairs in our loft, our offices. <laughs> but um, and so separating plants uh, by division or um, cutting and water propagating that kind of thing. Now just seems like the right time for that. Like I just feel like when it gets warmer, I just want to propagate. I want to repot. Uh, yeah, and all do that. all the things. Mm -hmm. Like I have that. Can I split that monstera now? If you want to propagate my hair, it's super easy. Yours is or propagation for mine. Split. Remember, I have two. Oh, do you have two? Yeah, you can do it anytime. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to do it too premature before spring and then hurt them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those those ones will be fine. I feel like they didn't go to dormancy. But I, I have a huge monstera, okay. and I have okay. been cutting it and propagating. Uh, but if you do come by, I will have um, little immature monstera cuttings too available. That'll be fun. But, yeah. CC, willow is also where aspirin was derived from. I knew I loved willow trees. I, know. I love them so, so much, but it's so cool. It's amazing all the all that's out in nature and what it can do for us. Yeah. And um, sadly, like some of these things have been lost and forgotten. Yeah. Bring them back, guys. Tell me all about them. That's interesting. Yeah. Hi from Florida. Hey, Crystal. How are you today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, today we just kind of wanted to chat because we're thinking spring and it's exciting us and it's beautiful. Yeah. Today's supposed to get, I think it was 57 or something. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm it's going to be like 60 something I'm Wednesday. Tomorrow. I'm, we should go. <gasps> we have a little like roof. What do we even <laughs> call that? <laughs> a balcony? Yeah, maybe. We call it a rooftop garden. Before, rooftop but... garden. We have a rooftop mm -hmm. garden which doesn't have much of a garden on it right now. We should go eat our lunch there. It'll be so warm. It's I breezy up there. <laughs> I'll anyway. go eat it myself. <laughs> um, get well, outside yeah. today, guys, and this week. Hopefully it is warm by you. Even if there's still snow on the ground, the sun's out. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you guys are blessed with that because we sure are here. Yeah. And, yeah. Sounds, and if we're in Michigan, like I feel like you guys are All right, let's go. Too. Do you guys think it's fake spring or real spring? Send it in. I'm curious. I'm saying it's fake spring. It probably is. I'm going to say real spring because glass half know. full, glass half empty. <laughs> I don't know. If you, like, if you believe in it enough, I just <laughs> if, you, if you just believe. If you just believe. No. But I don't know. Um, maybe. I know. I really hope so. I don't know. Looking outside the sun, I'm like, it could be. Yeah, but I, re the week. reality is I still have some snow in my yard. Uh, it kind of surprised me. I looked out and I was like, it's gone, right? No. But I also had, like, it drifted in my backyard to the point where I had, like, five feet of snow in spots. Goodness. Yeah. It, just the way that it shaped the fence and the garage and stuff and then my shed. It drifted up against the shed and it was, like, covered. And I was like, uh -huh. So, as it's melting, I still have some left. Fake. Real. But fake. Real. <laughs> Wait. Oh, at least we have some for real. Oh, my gosh. Stop yeah. the fake. No. Oh, goodness. 
Yeah. Okay, real quick about snow. Did you know that snow acts as insulation? A, a blanket of snow is literally a blanket. So it's like the idea of an igloo. It's like yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you have snow on your beds and you're hoping that your soil becomes workable sooner than later, shovel your snow off. Snow is great for a quick nitrogen source if you want to let it melt on there. But um, I want I want my soil workable. <laughs> yeah. So take all the snow off your beds if you have it there, even if you have snow on the ground um, and more snow coming. Take it off each time. That way your beds have the chance to reach the sun and start uh, thawing out. That's a good point, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because when it snows, I'm like, ah, the air doesn't need to be touched right now. It's not going to happen. But that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. There's always something you can do. And right now it's a good time to... Make sure you get your seedlings going, like, I don't know, that, repotting, propagating. Like, now's a good time to start getting pots and soil. Um, we can officially yeah. come out of hibernation, guys. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's it so much nice. to do now. And we rested all winter long, hopefully. I don't know. My schedule is so busy. But for the most part, we rested all winter long. And now it's time to get some work done. And I'm super excited. I'm just glaring at all the fake spring. <laughs> I'm just gonna, you guys are probably right, really. But yeah, but hopefully the next last winter that's coming will be quick. I hope. Yeah, hopefully we deserve um, it after last year's weather. We well, we've had a pretty good winter until that one week with all the snow. Yeah, yeah. but it was beautiful. I was in here for yeah. half of it, but it was beautiful. Yeah. Anywho, <laughs> y'all, I'm so glad you came and joined us today mm -hmm. to talk about spring and what we're getting done. And I hope this helped encourage you to get out there and get your infrastructure in place. Start spacing out what you're going to purchase this year for your gardens if you're going that wrong. But also to encourage you that you don't need to go purchase all these things to be a good yeah. gardener, to be a good houseplant owner. Um, you don't need all of the fancy tools to propagate to start your seeds. You don't. Your seeds want to grow. Your plants want to grow. Mm -hmm. So just do it. Um, and tell us all about it. We, we would love to hear about it. And I hope you guys just have a fantastic week. And enjoy um, the sun. Yeah, enjoy fake spring. Fake or real spring. spring. Um, and also, <laughs> I realized we didn't really go over the hashtag thing yet. But, um, yeah. I want to look at it more and talk to Haley. And then yeah. we will get back to you guys on that. Because I'd love to see your guys' gardens and have an easy way to... Look yeah, sorry, y'all. Mm -hmm. Drop the ball this week. We will go ahead and get those picked out. The and nice get weather that. is distracting. I know so much. So <laughs> Spring many fever. Spring fever. But thanks for tuning in. And as always, you know, leave in the comments what you guys want to hear more about, what you guys want yeah. to talk about in the future. Um, I think next week we will try to tackle some gardening and houseplant myths. So She's so excited <laughs> for this one. I know. I just think it's a really good one um, so that you can... I don't know. Waste a little know. bit less of your time doing yeah, something. Yeah, absolutely. Help your plants. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Very don't good. be upset with us. Okay. <laughs> don't be upset. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, all right.